Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Gen Rocket Solution Sales Training Series. And in this session, uh, we've invited our co-founder and chief architect, Heisel Taylor, to join us. Uh, we're going to be talking about test automation and CI/CD pipeline integration. We want to leverage Heisel's expertise in this particular area. Now, we want to remind you why this is so important is because we're in a huge exploding market. Uh, everybody wants to be uh, uh, using test automation. Everybody's building out a CI CD pipeline. Uh, what we've understood is only about 4% of the marketplace is 90% automated. So test data is a big barrier in that area. But this is what's going on. And this is why we're talking about it. It's going from about 16 billion up to 55 billion. And these are the tools that are being used, the open source tools like Jenkins and Selenium and Cucumber, and of course, really good vendors like Tricendus, SmartBear, Eggplant, and Sauce Labs, just to name a few. So Heisel, let, let's sort of look at GenRocket and how do we tie into uh, a CI CD pipeline in Jenkins? Because I know our partners and customers really want to have an answer to that question. How does this work? Sure. So just to understand the basic uh, back uh, components of GenRocket. GenRocket was uh, designed in Groovy, which sits on top of Java. Uh, its runtime is uh, built into a Java binary, which is why it can run basically ubiquitously anywhere on any platform that has a Java runtime. But now that being said, it's accessible through Java, but there's other ways you can access it as well. So when we take a look at this particular uh, diagram, we see a, uh, a, an automation pipeline. You see step one there, it says automate your testing. Okay, so in many cases that, that core automation is around Jenkins. You see that, that, that initial component there. And what Jenkins is really good at, it's good at launch scheduling and launching things when, when things are gonna launch. Uh, and normally that's some type of testing apparatus, whether that is a, a JUnit platform or something like that. Or in this example here, what we see is another uh, component here, Selenium. So something like Selenium or some other testing tool uh, may kick off a set of tests. And those tests themselves will need to have test data in order for them to accomplish some particular task. And so what, what normally happens is they have a, the name of a, a particular scenario that they want to run or a scenario chain or chain set. Uh, and then that's basically, now this is where you have that ability, all the flexibility to actually launch the GenRocket runtime. And that can either be done, let's say, with a batch file on Windows or a shell script on Linux or Unix. Uh, you could also use a scripting language or a programming compiled language. Scripting languages are normally more useful like uh, uh, Python or Groovy or Scala and things like that. Uh, and uh, there are other things that, that they're the testing automation tools that you have, uh, things that you've built in house or other tools that you have. All of those have the capability of accessing the Gen and calling the GenRocket runtime. And that GenRocket engine will kick off a scenario. It'll tend to load that scenario in just about 10 milliseconds and start generating data. Now, when you think about that data, sometimes for a particular test, you may need five rolls of data or you may need 100 rolls of data or something like that, depends on what you want. But normally that data can come back to you in just about a, under a, a 500 milliseconds or so, too, if you're just dealing with a small amount of data. Did that and, answer? Yes. Oh, that was brilliant. That was really helpful. I want to ask one more question. I know we get asked and is maybe but because of uh, TDM or test data management tools and a common so the mindset is let's populate an entire database and then we'll run our tests against that entire database. And we're really suggesting a slightly different model. Why are we suggesting a different approach? Sure. So true testing is about doing a unit of test and that test should run autonomously from every other test. So the first question you have to ask yourself is when you're running a test is what type of test are you actually running? Are you running a unit test, an integration test? a load test, a performance test, and those things make a difference in terms of the amount of data that you actually need. So it, it makes no sense to, in many senses, to, to have a, uh, in many cases, to have a database, let's say, with a thousand tables in it, and I need that, that database fully populated in order to run a particular test, because when you look at a particular test, I, I can pretty much guarantee you it's not going to use all 1,000 tables mm -hmm. unless you're doing a massive workflow, Got okay? It. Uh, so a particular test, let's say it may need 10 of those tables or 20 of those tables. And then you have to ask yourself, if it's just a unit of test, how much data do I need in each table in order to get full referential integrity so I can perform the particular test I want? And that's normally one row of data. So let's say out of 20 tables, you end up populating 
18 of those tables with one row of data and two of those tables with 10 or 50 or 100 rows of data or something like that so that you could actually test your business method. That's the goal of a real test. So you want to be able to spin up that test in 100 milliseconds or so, have the data fully populated, run that test, and then get rid of that data so you can go to the next autonomous test. So it. it's just a different way of thinking about how you do it. You never need all of that data at once. Okay, and maybe the last thing before we wrap up is, are there any gotchas? In other words, are, anything, are there any landmines, anything that uh, a customer or a partner should be concerned about when they're doing integration between GenRocket and their CICD pipeline? No, not really. You just, first of all, you need to understand what your platform is and, and how you want to communicate to GenRocket. Uh, once you understand that, and then, then the question is, what's the best way to, to, to communicate to GenRocket? We have a real-time REST engine, where you can speak over REST, we have a real-time socket engine, you can speak over socket. Of course, you can speak directly over through the, uh, through like the Java binary if you're using a tool like Groovy Scala, uh, Jython, uh, Java. And then, you know, uh, we also have our, our GMOS, our GenRocket multi-user server. So look, there are a plethora of ways to communicate with GenRocket, and that's the way we design it. It's open architecture, it's component-based architecture, uh, even, uh, even through our GenRocket API. There are multiple ways of communicating. So I don't perceive any particular gotchas. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aysel. Well, thanks for listening to this uh, GenRocket uh, training video on test automation and CI CICD pipeline integration. Thanks, everybody.